Welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how best to parent your Pisces child when you're a cancer mom or a cancer dad. This is a great combination of energy, very similar, so we're going to talk about the dynamic. Before we get into it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular Positive Parenting with Astrology content. We have many requests for videos right now from you guys. If you have made a specific request for a video, you will get it. I am getting to it. I have a list of all the requests you guys have made and I'm slowly getting to um, all the uh, video requests. I have a bunch of requests for uh, Pisces, Taurus, Cancer, and other energies. So I am getting to them. Uh, this video is actually based on the request of one of you. So I'm, I will get to all your requests. So thank you for your attention and your patience. Okay, so Pisces and Cancer energy. So here's how we're going to structure this video today. We're going to give an overview of, of Pisces energy, then an overview of Cancer energy, then we're going to talk about the dynamic and the thing that you, the things rather plural, that you, the Cancer parent, should be concentrating on in regards to your Pisces child. Okay, so Pisces is mutable water. As a water sign, it is a feminine energy sign. It is a more of a passive sign, an intuitive sign. Water meaning it is a self-contained private energy. It is not as outwardly expressive as fire signs, air signs, especially fire signs, because air signs can be more detached, but fire sign people really wear their emotions on their sleeves. Pisces is not like that, neither is Cancer. We'll get to that. These energies are very, very similar. Pisces is a very self-contained energy. It makes the chart holder more of a private person regarding the emotional, their emotional experience. They need to feel very comfortable with the parent in order to openly, outwardly express and articulate their emotional experience. There is almost always a tendency with water signs to repress or suppress emotions. I'm gonna go over a little bit the difference between re repression and suppression here. If you've read Gabor Mate's work on reparenting uh, and trauma-informed therapy, um, he talks about repressing emotions and the harmful effects that can have on the body. When you repress your emotions, you are doing that subconsciously. You don't even realize you're doing it. Suppression is the conscious um, reigning in of emotion. So if you are feeling yourself getting very angry to the point where you want to yell with your child and you are making a conscious decision not to yell, not to overreact emotionally, you are suppressing that rage in the moment. Now that can be healthy, right? It's not always healthy for us to just give an extreme expression to, for example, our anger. It's not healthy for relationships. So that that is not necessarily unhealthy when all the time, but this con subconscious repression of emotions continually on a consistent daily basis is harmful to the body. So with Pisces energy, there's almost always a tendency or at least a, a fear of the long-term effects of that kind of emotional suppression. So my point in pointing that out is to emphasize that it is very important that the Pisces child feel comfortable expressing their emotional experience to the parent. And you want to make sure that you are not teaching your Pisces child to suppress or re re suppress or repress emotions consistently or continuously. That means you as a Cancer parent need to make sure you are expressing emotions in a healthy way because Cancer also is this private water sign, has a tendency to kind of suppress and not talk about their emotional experience. It's the symbol of the crab, right? The symbol of the crab is associated with Cancer, that kind of tendency to just retreat into its shell and withdrawal and not deal with the emotional experience. You want to make sure you are not uh, encouraging your, your Pisces child to do that by example. So that means you have to work on your own healthy emotional expression as well. So both Pisces and Cancer as water signs approach the world more from a place of intuition and feeling this kind of sensitivity to feelings. For example, air signs approach the world more from a place of logic and detachment. Water science is very different. So Pisces and Cancer obviously have that in common. So it, as you as the Cancer parent, it may take you a little less effort to understand your Pisces child in that respect because you approach the world very similarly. So Pisces, out of all the zodiac signs, Pisces is the most closely attuned with what Carl Jung refers to as the collective unconscious. It is the most 
able to kind of tap into that collective unconscious. It is a sign all about collective healing. Pisces is a, uh, is a very empathic sign and it is a sign that is very attuned to the feelings of others, the emotional experiences of other person, other people. And it is very motivated to help other people heal. Now, because Pisces identifies so closely with the emotional experience of other people, there's almost always a risk of codependency. So we're going to talk a little bit in about, you guessed it, about boundaries with water sign energy, but there, that risk is always there. Pisces are often completely overwhelmed by the feelings of others. They have to learn how to, at some point, detach from the feelings of others and realize that those are the emotional experiences of other people, that they are not required to continuously take on the emotional experiences of other people. Empathy is fine, but constantly identifying with them to the point that you're feeling the emotional experience of the other person. If you're doing that all the time, it is very easy to burn out. We don't want to teach our Pisces children to burn out. Pisces is associated with the 12th house. We often refer to the 12th house as kind of like an open gate to that uh, non-material or spiritual plane, if you will. So again, Pisces of all the signs is kind of the most closely associated with that collective unconscious, but also with that other plane, the spiritual plane. Pisces people, I've talked about this in other videos, Pisces people are almost always not fulfilled just by the material pursuits, the material plane. They are always thinking about how to reach the kind of almost spiritual fulfillment. And they do that. They seek that through a variety of means, through art, through artistic expression, creative expression, through spirituality, sometimes in extreme cases when there's no other outlet through substance abuse. But they're always seeking that kind of fulfillment, that spiritual fulfillment beyond this kind of material earthly plane of existence. Always something to think about when you're parenting a Pisces child. So for that reason, it's a frequent occurrence that Pisces children do not always find joy and fulfillment in kind of the mundane activities that some other kids may find enjoyment in. That's not to say that those mundane activities are bad. It's just Pisces is always thinking about fulfillment beyond that those experiences. So as you raise a Pisces child and your Pisces child gets older, you're going to have to think about how to encourage them to seek and reach their own personal fulfillment and kind of what they need to do that. And part of that experience is to uh, introduce your Pisces child to all these different things from art, from spirituality, maybe religion, other things, and see what they gravitate to. Now, cancer energy. Okay, cancer is kind of the, the natural sign associated with the mother. Okay, cancer is associated with the fourth house. That's the house we associate with home, family, early childhood experiences, things like that. So cancer in some ways is the archetype of the mother. It is a very nurturing energy. So when a parent has a cancer sun or a cancer moon, they're well placed to be a nurturer. That does not always mean that a parent with a cancer placement will be a good parent or a good nurturer, but the potential and the capacity is there. And remember, I almost always say this, right? You as the parent have the responsibility for the relationship with your child. Your child does not have all the sophistication yet about managing relationships and healthy emotional expression and all these things. It is your responsibility, the parent, for the relationship with your child. So once you take that, you know, you realize that and take that responsibility on and take responsibility for your own actions and your own, um, your own healing, that your relationship with your child has the capacity to transform and become better, right? It's really hard, if not impossible, to change another person. You can change yourself. But the good news is, that when you heal yourself, work on your own healing, because our healing is never really fully actualized 100% in my opinion. But when you work on your own healing and work on your own negative conditioning, often the relationship with the child transforms because you have made the, the um, decision to make changes. So cancer. Cancer is cardinal water. So this is an interesting combination of energies. So sometimes when you have... Um, a mutable energy with either a fixed or cardinal energy, the mutable energy tends to be pulled toward the modality of the other sign. So obviously we're talking about here uh, a, a parent who has a cancer sun or a cancer moon and a Pisces sun or moon child. But you can have a whole combination of different energies in the chart. So we're talking about these energies kind of in a concentrated way right now without the nuances of all the other planetary en energies happening in the birth charts. 
So in this combination, you may have the Pisces mutable modality being pulled to be more cardinal because the parent has a cardinal modality, Cancer being a cardinal sign. So it's something to keep in mind. Also, when you when you see um, a birth chart where somebody has like a mutable sun and a fixed moon or a mutable moon and a cardinal sun, oftentimes the moon, because it's mutable modality, will be pulled toward the modality of the other major energy in the chart. So something to keep in mind. I say that as somebody who's very has a very cardinal energy and I live with two people who have very fixed energy in their charts. And I'm always like trying to motivate the others. <laughs> Can get frustrating sometimes anyway cancer is a very psychic emotive energy it has the potential to be highly psychic by that i mean psychically intuitive cancer people just seem to know things they seem to intuit things and when the the cancer person is the parent it's funny because the kids sometimes they have no way of knowing or they don't really understand how the parent knows this it's because the parent has this intuitive feeling that something is happening, but they don't really have any hard evidence, but they just intuit stuff. So they're very good at that. So this is a good combination of energies in part because Pisces is so private and sometimes hides the emotional experience that can the cancer parent is kind of good at ferreting things out and knowing when the Pisces kid needs this or needs that, or maybe needs some alone time, or maybe needs some extra attention or is going through something that's emotionally difficult and maybe needs to be engaged a little bit more. They have the, the cancer parent has a capacity to really ferret out what's going on. So that's, that's great. And when we talk about cancer and it being a very emotive sign, remember that cancer is ruled by the moon. The moon in our chart rules our emotional experiences, what we need to recharge our energies, kind of how we show up emotionally in relationships. So when a chart holder has heavy cancer energy, that is a person with um, who makes decisions largely based on emotion and intuitive feelings, but also emotions, the emotional experience plays a very large role in their lives. They really cannot do well in a relationship without their emotional experience being recognized. Now, when a father has a cancer son or cancer moon, this is a really great thing. And I noticed that cancer son men that I know, even the ones that don't have kids, they have a very nurturing fatherly quality about them. And I love that because I mean, either parent, mother or father has a capacity to be nurturing. And often men with heavy cancer energy as kids were either shown outright or encouraged outright or told to suppress their emotions because it wasn't manly, right? So sometimes cancer men will have that issue as adults where they have issues with their own emotional expression. Not always, but depends on what their childhood was like. But in Generations past, boys were often taught to repress and suppress emotions. So obviously a cancer person whose their emotional life is so important that if that part of them was suppressed as a child, that you know brings up a whole host of issues as an adult, including how to behave you know in a healthy relationship, because obviously emotional communication regarding emotions is important. And to cancer, they need that, right? So they have to figure out a way if they had that childhood experience where they were taught to repress emotions as adults, they have to figure out how to articulate emotions in a healthy way. And often when they have kids, they, they learn that because they, their kids, you know, are having these experiences that they themselves had as children. And now they realize what they needed as children and then subsequently what their kids need. Right. That was what happened to me in my parenting journey and my healing journey. When I became a mom, I realized, not only did I realize all the stuff that happened to me that was negative when I was a kid, but what I needed to change to make sure my own kid was raised in a healthy way and became an emotionally healthy, psychologically healthy adult. Bottom line, for cancer people, life is about deep meaning and they need to be able to connect with others on an emotional level. Now, one of the main differences between cancer and Pisces energy is that Pisces is about collective healing of the group and cancer appears to be more about nurturing on a one-to-one -one basis in relationships. And obviously that bodes well when cancer is the parent because the cancer parent is well situated to provide that nurturing in the one-to-one -one parent child relationship because that's the nature of the energy. So when you have two people in a relationship, in this case, parent and child, and you have very similar energies of the same type, water in this case, right? 
um, you, you always, always, almost always run the risk of the energies kind of melding together and the lot, the boundary lines kind of being blurred. Now, as we've talked about in other videos, water sign energy always has that risk blurring the boundaries between the water sign person and the other individual. So when the two people in the relationship are both water sign people, you have this, uh, this tendency even more intensely, right? So that's kind of the main thing to be aware about and think about when you're parenting your Pisces child is there's always this risk that boundary lines are blurred between the two of you. And of course, the first thing we're going to talk about now that we're getting to the dynamic part of this is boundaries, right? And how to promote healthy boundaries, not only for yourself, but for your Pisces child. Okay, healthy boundaries. Number one, cancer tends to be a self-sacrificing energy, especially when it's the mom who's the cancer sun or cancer moon. Okay, so, and it's also a very emotional energy we talked about. But because of the self-sacrificing nature of the sign, it's easy for the cancer person to get upset when the child does not show appreciation. Now, kids don't always show appreciation. In fact, it's not the child's job to show the parent appreciation. It's nice when it happens, but it's not their job to validate the parent's emotional experience, right? Parents, the adult. So that's one of the first things is because cancer is a self-sacrificing energy and a very sensitive energy, it's easy to become irritated, show irritation, sh even show anger, right? At, at the Pisces child, when the cancer parents efforts appear to go unnoticed, you are going to have to check yourself with this. Okay. And make sure that you are not burning yourself out. If you're burning yourself out, saying yes to everything and doing all these things and self-sacrificing, that's the model you're showing your Pisces child that they also need to be self-sacrificing continually and can't say no to things. So remember that when you're, when you're uh, doing things, even when that don't involve your Pisces child, that maybe involve other volunteer efforts or other things or doing things for other people or not taking rest time for yourself because you're showing your Pisces child how to behave and how to interact with others. And you want to make sure that you are not allowing yourself to be consistently taken advantage of. And you want to make sure you are not suggesting or showing your Pisces child that you are required to self-sacrifice in order to be in a relationship. That relationships don't always mean continual self-sacrifice where you're doing all the sacrificing. And remember, and I've said this in other videos, healthy boundaries are not about control. It's not about you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. Although when kids are little, you have these no bargain rules and they need, they need rules. But healthy boundaries when you're articulating a healthy boundary it's if you continue to do this i'm gonna have to do this like i told you please not to yank on my collar if you continue to yank on my collar i will have to put you down i cannot hold you any longer right or if it's an adult in an adult relationship i told you that i cannot live with this so if you continue to do this i will not be able to stay in this relationship it is what is what is going to happen if you continue to do the offensive behavior, okay? And when you are making those statements, protecting your own boundaries, you are teaching your Pisces child to protect their own boundaries. Again, I cannot emphasize how important it is to teach healthy boundaries to a Pisces child because they have the capacity for such empathy and care and healing. It is very easy for them to just, you know, burn out by doing everything and self-sacrificing. And it is so important for you to show them that that is not necessary and it, it's not, that doesn't make them worthy of love. They are worthy of love because they're human beings and they are worthy of love. That they do not need to do all those things to be worthy of love or to receive love and affection. Now, um, number two that we're going to talk about. Make sure your Pisces child feels comfortable talking to you about anything. Even things that are bad or you consider it negative. Cancer is a very emotional energy. It's easy to show, you know, anger or... In the case of cancer, it's not so much anger most of the time as just kind of this emotional overreaction, like dramatic, maybe tears or being really sad or things like that. It's okay to cry in front of your kids. I'm not saying it's not. But if you're constantly overreacting emotionally when your child approaches you to talk, eventually they're not going to want to talk to you because they fear the emotional overreaction. And Pisces children are very sensitive. Remember, they're very empathic. They identify very strongly with the feelings and emotional experience of the parent. So they feel bad when they do something that causes this emotional 
react overreaction or this you know sadness in the parent so if you're if you're constantly um kind of overreacting emotionally or becoming emotional whenever they approach you they're probably going to approach you less and less frequently okay so you have to remain calm and even keeled to the extent that you can when they approach you with stuff right so you always want to let them talk and make sure that you engage them in conversation but you let them know that everything is okay whatever you have to say to me it does not change how i feel about you if there is a problem we will deal with it if there is some consequence from your action i trust that you will deal with it if you need help you can ask for help right but make sure they feel comfortable approaching you to talk about anything and that you will not make them feel bad if they share something with you that's maybe not that great and remember cancer is an energy that likes to withdraw into its shell especially when it feels hurt cancer's feelings get hurt very easily that's okay we need that sensitivity in the world that is not a bad thing but just make sure that you are open to communicating with their child when they need you and make sure you're not shutting your child out or withdrawing all of the time it's fine to take breaks you can tell your kids i need a break i need a rest but i'll be with you in a half an hour or a few minutes or whatever but continuously shutting them out and by that i mean continuously being unavailable when they approach you and make bids for connection with you eventually creates a disconnection in the relationship also make sure you're spending lots of pressure free one-on-one -on -one time with your pisces child i always say this in so many of my videos uh, because it's true so when you're spending just time with your kid there's no pressure to do anything you're just occupying the same space maybe enjoying the same leisurely activity that helps you guys bond and helps to strengthen your connection right and by just hanging out with them that sends a lot of messages to the child my parent enjoys my company i'm worthy of my parents time and attention we can have fun uh doing things you know this relationship is relaxing so i'm relaxed right now that relationships are good things full of good moments right things like that and eventually your pisces child will feel comfortable approaching you with things because they feel relaxed in your presence and again we we kind of touched on this briefly already number three the kind of the big areas in the dynamic between cancer and pisces that we want to talk about cancer parents need to learn to manage their emotions cancer is very sensitive right we said the their feelings are hurt very easily that's okay it's not a bad thing it's not a negative trait or anything like that just something to be aware of and manage when you're interacting with your child pisces kids especially if they think that they've hurt their parents including hurt them emotionally they feel terrible most kids do pisces especially because it's so sensitive and empathic feels terrible so it's okay to say hey you know that kind of hurt my feelings or this or this but make sure that the message is this happened but you know this doesn't change how i feel about you relationships are about rupture and repair rupture and repair over time no relationship is perfect okay anytime you have two people in a close relationship they're going to be irritated with each other sometimes they're going to be angry with each other sometimes that's okay but when you're modeling the repair right the rupture and the repair over time kids learn that oh we can this can happen these ruptures can happen or my parent can hurt my feelings or i can hurt their feelings without intending to but we're always okay at the end of the day because of the relationship so that repair part is very important so it's okay to say hey you know you accidentally dropped my favorite vase or coffee mug and you know i'm i'm kind of sad about that but it's okay it's a coffee mug no big deal at the end of the day okay things like this and then you don't treat the child any differently right because of what they did that sends a message to the child that even though this kind of bad thing happened or i did something that was kind of bad like my parent still loves me and feels the same about me right that's unconditional love okay so you want to make sure that that's the relationship you're creating with your pisces child and lastly the last and fourth big thing we're going to talk about in this dynamic is pisces kids all kids really especially sensitive uh kids like pisces kids need emotional consistency from their cancer parent cancer is a very moody energy i know what that's like i'm a gemini sometimes our moods change you know uh day by day hour by hour, hour sometimes minute by minute cancer is very moody again that's okay it's not a bad thing um just that remember that you know your kid needs emotional consistency from you it is okay to say things like hey i'm in a bad mood because x happened it has nothing to do with you i'm just a little bit down because blah or something at work but again nothing to do with you 
that's okay. As long as you're communicating that to your kid, especially older kids will understand that. Okay. I'm a little sad today because X, I need a little TLC and I need some rest time because something happened. You don't have to explain in detail what it is, but that's important because the child knows, okay, mom or dad can be upset about something has nothing to do with me. And that's part of the human experience and that's okay. It doesn't change. does not, it does not change our relationship. You really want to make sure that your Pisces child does not feel as if they have to walk on eggshells around you. Really tough thing for kids to have to deal with when they don't know or really have no way of guessing what mood the parent's going to be and are they going to be, especially parents that show a lot of uh, emotion, right? Overreact sometimes emotionally. Are they going to be mad? Are they going to be sad? Are they going to be this? If they have a bad day, are they going to kind of emotionally take it out on me by raising their voice or just, you know, other things or being irritated easily. You want to make sure your Pisces child does not feel like that as if they have to walk on eggshells around you. So you're going to have to watch your emotions and check them. And that means you're going to have to do a lot of work on your own healing from negative conditioning and other things, including possibly how you were raised as a kid, right? So it's that process always starts with you. So look at yourself first. And if you are getting emotionally triggered by things your child does, you need to look very carefully at that and ask yourself, why are you feeling triggered? Is it because as a kid you were taught to repress your own emotions and now seeing the emotions in your, your child is a trigger for you? That's the, that's the case for a lot of parents, myself included. No shade. It's, that's something a lot of us have to work on. But the fact that you realize that and you're actively working on that, that's half the battle right there, okay? And also remember, model the repair, right? After the rupture, apologize. A uh, sincere apology to a sensitive child like Pisces goes a long way. For the kid to see the parent is putting themselves in a vulnerable position and apologizing, that sends a, uh, an important message to the child that not only are they worthy of an apology, but that adults mess up, but adults also apologize and are capable of initiating repair. All very good stuff to strengthen your attachment with your Pisces child. And lastly, make sure your Pisces child does not feel responsible for your emotional state. Okay, that's very close to parentifying, treating the child as if they're the parent, right? You want to make sure that you are not suggesting your child is responsible for your emotions. Statements like, oh, it would make me very happy if you finished your plate. You know, kids, well, you know, parents of my parents' generation would do that all the time. Don't you want me to be happy or I'm very sad because you didn't finish? That's not healthy. It, it, it promotes like obesity because now the kid is associating cleaning their plate with, you know, making other people happy. That makes no sense, right? Eat until you're no longer hungry. And if you're, you know, there's food left on your plate after you satisfied your appetite, that's okay. That's an example of this dynamic that's very unhealthy. So your kids are not responsible for your emotional well being, okay? It's fine if the parent gets sad once in a while and the kid you know, comforts the parent. That's, that's most likely going to happen because you as a parent are comforting your child. So you're modeling that behavior for them. So when they see you upset, they're going to want to comfort you too. Okay. That's fine. But just make sure you are not insinuating that your Pisces child is responsible for your emotional experience. And that's an example of that um, negative dynamic I just talked about that, you know, it will make me happy if you did this, or I'm so sad because you didn't do this. You know, you want to avoid statements like that. They seem harmless, just like that. But over time, you're teaching the kid they're responsible for the emotional state of the parent, and that's not healthy, okay? The parent is responsible for the emotional state of the parent. So that's what I wanted to talk about regarding the Pisces child and the cancer parent. I'm going to address one of your uh, other video requests here very shortly. Got a lot of good content planned for you guys. And also, welcome to cancer season, all you cancer parents. Happy cancer season. Thanks for your attention, and we will be back soon.